Okay, everyone, welcome back to the Pad Print Process channel here. Um, I promised originally that we were going to start with very basic, very short segments on things, and uh, the first one is going to prove that out here. We're going to start with something that has almost nothing to do with the process. It's just the very, very beginning, which is the uh, correct selection of cups to mix your ink in. Um, not ink mixing, not how you mix the ink, not the ratios, nothing like that, just simply where you do it. So here we go. There are a lot of, uh, there are only a couple of good choices for uh, cups and mixing, and there are a lot of bad choices. And I, believe me, when I start out with something simple like this, it's because I've seen it in the field over and over and over again. A lot of choices that people make that are, uh, they think are penny wise, or they think are, are saving them money, but end up causing them trouble. Uh, but uh, let's start with something really simple. First off, you need to have a solvent resistant cup. So out of the gate, the styrofoam cups, uh, whether it's this or the ones that Dunkin' Donuts come in, you hit this with solvent, you're going to melt the bottom out. Um, and obviously, a keg cup, something like that, also a problem. Now, you may find some that are a little more resistant to the solvent that you have or the solvent you're using is not so aggressive um, that it melts immediately. But the problem is if it melts at all, that... Um, plastic is getting into your binder and your ink and is going to affect your adhesion, your pot life, and all that kind of stuff. So the, definitely what you want to do is take a look at the bottom, and if it says something like styrene on the bottom, get rid of it. If it's a foam cup, get rid of it. If for some reason you're in doubt about this, pour some thinner in it and let it sit for an hour and see how it goes. It'll probably melt out the bottom. The next thing that I see people doing all the time they're trying to save money on is to use an ink cup. They think if they can put their ink in and their thinner in and then stir it up, uh, that, that that's going to be a good solution. The problem with that is, of course, you can't really get a good mix going on in there. And also, um, you are, you're, you're risking a whole sorts of things, one of the which is to your ceramic doctor blade, which, you know, you save a penny on a cup and you spend $250 on a doctor ring, you're in all sorts of trouble. Normally, in conjunction with this level of um, poor choice making is also the use of a screwdriver in the process of doing it. And obviously if I had had the ring on here, I would have cracked the ring. I see it happen all the time. The other thing that you don't want to use, you're thinking, okay, well, what do I use, Trent? Do I use a paper cup? Why don't I use a, like a coffee cup? So here's my coffee cup, the one from the place I go every morning. And it looks pretty good. You've got paper. Um, it doesn't, it's not going to melt uh, right out of the gate. The problem with this is if you went and run your thumbnail across it, like this, you'll find that the inside is wax coated. You get a little wax in your fingernail, you can see it's shiny. That's great for when you're commuting into work to keep your coffee from melting your cup. However, it's terrible for hardener in your two component pad printing ink. The wax gets into your ink and then um, either harms the catalyzation process or completely stops it, both of which obviously are a problem for your process. So, continuing with this. So what's good? What's a good idea? Well, the first thing is there are still available full no-wax paper cups. Why they would sell these for anything other than pad printing, I'm not exactly sure. Um, they're not particularly good for coffee. Coffee melts through and things like that, but they're perfectly good for what you want to do. They're just a little hard to find. Sweetheart makes them. We sell them, although not as much as we used to, um, and they would be a good choice for the process. You're not going to um, contaminate your ink. Uh, you can see things in there, you know, it's white, you can see what's going on most of the time, you can see if everything's mixed and, and, and put together well. Your second choice is, and this is the choice that we've gone with almost exclusively now, is a plastic cup that is made out of, let's see if it zooms in, polypropylene. So this is solvent resistant, it's disposable, it's cheap. Also, it's clear you get the opportunity when you're mixing, and you're using a tongue depressor to mix, not a screwdriver, that you can see how well incorporated everything is in your ink at the same time, which is a really nice solution. Um, try to stay away. I mean, you could theoretically use a, a reusable polypropylene uh, thing or a, a stainless cup or something like that. I've seen people do this because they think they're saving a nickel or whatever it happens to be. One, it's unbelievably inconvenient. Two, you risk every time you have to mix ink, you have to clean it completely. You have to get everything out of it and redo it. You miss 
make, leaving the, you risk having the ink that's in there go bad and stay in there, but also you risk that the solvent that you're using to clean with is going to contaminate your ink process in the next step. So the best solution before you even start anything is just to call up, order some cups, or you know you can do it from a local supply store. I don't care. I'm, that's not our business is to sell you cups. But if you wanted to, we have them here. Um, and this is what I suggest. You can get them in different sizes. So if you're using one of our larger machines, you could get a, a much larger cup, more like a ice latte size cup rather than this little one. Uh, and stay away from ones that melt. And absolutely don't use your own cups for mixing because uh, you're just going to damage the doctor blade. Have a great day. That's it for now. And tomorrow we'll come back with something else simple and uh, start to uh, get you towards the process. Thank you very much.